What up, YouTube? It's your host, Armani, and I'm the host of the youngest wrestling talk wrestling show known as the Wrestling Biz Talk. And really, what what what's today's date going on? Oh wait, this is the day after NXT TakeOver Respect, which happens to be one of the best pay-per-views this month. And I know we're going to do a little bit of that with a little bit of Bound for Glory. And I'll just start off with Bound for Glory first. Because I know a lot of my TNA fans will probably just, you know, want to hear what my thoughts are. Typical TNA pay-per-view. I mean, for Bound for Glory, it was a good setup, a good bound. Um, so I'm going to give them a 7 on that. I mean, it wasn't as good as Night of Champions. That's all I'm going to say. And it wasn't as good as SummerSlam. It's far behind NXT. The only reason why I give it a 7 is because this was TNA trying to be very creative and trying to bring themselves back up. I can't go over every match because I, I just didn't catch it all because I, I don't have a stream to TNA. I'm sorry, guys. But I can say this much. The aftermath of what I heard, which to me... I want to say congratulations first off to Matt Hardy for winning his first ever world heavyweight title that actually matters. Sadly, it's not recognized by the PWI as an actual world championship. But if I say if anybody could bring a legitimacy back to that world title in TNA, it's Matt Hardy. It's just Matt Hardy, I mean, really. Or Drew McIntyre, in my opinion, or Drew Galloway, whatever you want to call him. But the match, because I caught a little bit of the match on YouTube, I went and watched it, and it was, it was pretty good. I liked it. Um, I actually liked the build-up to the fact that they had made it a triple threat. Because these are the three guys I, I've already told people already that should be headlining TNA this year, and that's Matt Hardy, Ethan Carter, and <sighs> Drew Galloway. The main reason why it's just because they're all young talent as far as TNA is concerned. And if you're going to make something like a teacher student thing, Matt Hardy's probably one of the perfect guys there. Because honestly, when I look at Jeff, I think you can't really be relying on Jeff as a reliable world champion there right now. Due to personal demons, family, or whatever he's got going on, I just, I don't see Jeff as a good, you know, teacher like how Shawn Michaels was to him. But, Jeff's a good, a good wrestler and a good talent, so let's not hate on him, guys. Um, I love this because, one, I've always been a fan of Matt Hardy. I know a lot of people might be shocked. Matt Hardy? Really? I'm like... Well, Matt Hardy was funny as shit when he said, Hey, Randy, want to have some grapes? I actually was hoping that TNA would bring him in with Jeff being a heel. And when Jeff's trying to be all serious, Matt Hardy would just come in just like, you know, nonchalant, just go like, Hey, Jeff, have some grapes, man. Mama said eat your food, Jeff. Eat your food. Hey, and here's some turkey bone while we're at it. <laughs> Which would have been funny as shit ever. But... Honestly, Matt Hardy is a hard worker. He deserves to be a world champion. And Matt, congratulations. Um, I like the ending, the aftermath of all this, because Ethan Carter took Stoop to a whole new low and basically forced Matt Hardy to relinquish the TNA World Heavyweight title. Which, this is, which is an injunction, and now we're going to have a world title series. If TNA is considering this as a reboot for their company, hopefully, I say, if you're going to do this, TNA, please get organized. Put the superstars that you know that you want to spotlight in this match, in this whole tournament. Main reason why is because you want to get those mainstream talents. You want to get that homegrown feel. I mean, I know Matt and Drew are not really your guys just yet because they were made in WWE but I look at it right now you should really focus on them and focus on Ethan Carter you should focus on guys like Tyrus you know 
so many of the guys who are not getting too much of a shot. I mean, you should really establish your stars for this World Series tournament. Like, you should definitely showcase a lot of them if you want to get your show together. And you got to get organized and you cannot drop the ball like you did with Samoa Joe. I mean, like, what's up with that? Hey, Hurricane won't know what I mean. But anyway. All right. So, Bound for Glory, I'm giving it just a 7 just to be fair because I didn't watch. I mean, the fans will probably eat my ass just because I didn't watch and I probably rated them lower than that. So I'm going to give it a 7. So. That's just that's just me being apologetic. Too. All right, now on to bigger and better things with the NXT review of Takeover Respect. First match: Finn Balor and Samoa Joe versus Dash and Dawson, which to me was actually a very good match for uh, for an opener match. And really, those opener matches are supposed to get you to get hyped up and like really get into the show. So, this match is going to get a 7.5, because I thought this was going to be a squash match, because, you know, you got Bowler and Joe versus Dash and Dawson? I mean, Dash and Dawson, I mean, they're rising tag team, they're, 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 this is why I made it a good rating here, because these guys, even though they're a rising tag team, and I never expect them to beat Joe and Bowler to begin with, they showed a lot of aggression, they showed a lot of technique in that ring and great teamwork. I see them being future te NXT tag team champions and also maybe future WWE tag team champions just because how good they are already. So, and I really, I really feel like that NXT they really did um, spotlight them in that match and gave them a fair spotlight against Joe and Bowen. Actually a pretty decent spotlight. Those guys should be... I mean, if I was those guys... And I know Triple H is in the back right now. I better be kissing his ass way. I, I mean, I would be up to his ass with my lips on the back of his ass. Because those guys got a decent, decent showing out there. Which, it, when it comes to guys matches like that, I mean, it's, it's like... If you're not on the main roster and one of the main mid-cards... I mean, really, that that's like getting your ass kicked. And what I mean by that, it would have been like, for a match like that, that should have been like a match where basically Sheamus called out Zack Ryder and does the bro kick right there, and then knocks out Zack Ryder, pins him one, two, three. Match over in two seconds. Um, kind of deal. But for this kind of match, for these young guys, they got their match there with, Look at our young main eventers right there. I gotta say, I mean, you not only now have created a potential tag team, maybe a redneck tag team in a way, but you've also spotlighted your main eventers as, okay, they're no joke, and the guys that they're going against are no joke at all. So, it's a 7.5. It's, a, I mean, for us as a typical fan who haven't watched these guys that often, with Dash and Dawson, I think... We would have underestimated him from the beginning. And when you look at the card, what, who you think is really going to win? You honestly won't believe, and which is true to believe, it's going to be Balor and Joe. So, but for a match that's that they did it was pretty good, a pretty good fight. So, well, it gets a 7.5. The next match, which gets a 8.5 is Baron Corbin and Rhino versus Jason Jordan and Chad Gable. This match, altogether, was a really, really great match. A great tag team match for the Dusty Rhodes Classic semifinals second match. And you can tell when it's a good match is when everybody in the entire arena is so into it, they can just... You know, you were chanting NXT, NXT, this is awesome, this is awesome. Or they're going like, Jason Jordan, which I hardly ever hear once in a while, but damn. Uh, then they, you hear, Gore, 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 Gore. And then you hear, Gore, Ben sucks, Gore, 
fucking sucks. Or in the fan, I mean, the pop that Chad Gable got, which was Gable, 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 and Kurt Angle's theme music. Like, I remember back in the day, we used to say, you suck, you suck, you suck, and Kurt Angle would be like, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know. But, you know, to me, this was a match that everyone was into. Jason Jordan and Chad Gable were, I say, those guys should be managed by Kurt Angle, and they should be named the Olympiad, and they should be led by Jack Swagger as their main inventor, and basically with Kurt Angle as their, all three of their mentors. I gotta say, that they would be a, they would be a great faction. Almost like what Ric Flair was to Evolution. That's how I see Kurt Angle. If he were if WWE, please WWE sign Kurt Angle, please, and put him with those guys and manage them, because you can actually have a cool faction known as the Olympiad right there. And if you have Jack Swagger, they got the modern, the today's main eventer, along with the past main eventer, impossible Hall of Famer for the WWE, even though he's a TNA Hall of Famer. And then you got the two future guys right there, in and um, Jordan and Gable. And you can even throw Brock Lesnar in that picture, too. Because, you know, it just makes sense. They they put up a really good match last night. I mean, it was real technical. It was really good in chain style. Um, chain style wrestling, most people don't realize, is far different from actual, you know, actual stuff styles that they're used to, but chain wrestling is the most common, and last night, that technical chain style, that amateur style that they did was beautiful. I mean, I've never seen so many people executed since Kurt Angle and Benoit, and I can't believe I just mentioned Benoit, but anyway, I mean, that's how good these guys were, so hopefully these guys get a big push. With Baron Corbin and Rhino on their hand, Rhino looked like a beast as a ring general. And, you know, what you see of Rhino, you can always expect to get it, but Rhino looked pretty beast out there. And then Corbin, he looked like a million dollars just because of how the match went. I don't think he would be, in, traditionally, I don't think he would be like the million dollars that I saw last night. But with, um... With the fact that Chad Gable and him had a freaking clinic out there, and I can say this because I saw it, it was really good. I mean, I mean, I think with the right opponents, Corbin can look like a million dollars, and Chad Gable is one of those guys. So that was actually a really good match. I mean, Corbin looked pretty good, even if for people say he sucks, and that's just because he's overexposed in a way. So I just hope. You know, he progresses and evolves his style. Um, next match. The Divas match that I was waiting for. Asuka versus Dana Brooke. I have been waiting to see Kana come to the WWE for a while since when we watched Brooklyn. I couldn't wait to see what she could do. I had to look at her Joshi matches. I had to look at her... Freaking New Japan wrestling matches. I had to look at her hustle ones. I mean, she was she's freaking awesome. In those perspectives. But, holy shit, she was a beast. Beating the crap out of Dana Brooke. And Dana Brooke, you know, she goes out there being the classic diva. And being arrogant as hell. It's like, fuck, I'm the best bitch in the round of the lane. And... Basically, Asuka says, oh, you're the bitch of the land? Well, guess what you are to me. Basically, Asuka... Oh, my God. She did. That martial arts style made her look like a million dollars for her debut match. It was a good match overall. So, for a debut match, that's a 10 on a Richter for me. And as for the entire match, overall match, that's a 9. But, and it was really good. I mean, even Emma tried to get into it, but Asuka was not having it with them. 
So basically, Asuka looked like, oh my god, you know she's definitely probably the best diva on that roster. Next to um, Bailey and Sasha Banks right now. Okay. Next match. Apollo Crews versus Tyler Breeze. I actually enjoyed this match. Main reason... It was, it, it, it was an interesting style. I think, one, Yuha Nation, Tyler Breeze, they, I, think they, I think they were going to mesh in chemistry. I just don't, but as far, but I only gave this match a 7. Uh, probably one of my lower ratings of this show, and I wasn't hoping that for either one of them, but I think it's just because they didn't get enough time to do their stuff in the ring. I think if they had more time, it would have been at least a little bit more beautiful. And it made me kind of worry, too, about Apollo. I mean, I love Apollo Crews' character. I think he's definitely the next black superstar to be a world champion, in my opinion. But, in this entire match, Apollo Crews, I was getting starting to worry. What, is he getting overexposed? I mean, is he going to get exposed by WWE and what his moves are? Because he's not doing a whole lot. That's what I'm worried about. Because I believe he could do a lot better. And if you are a fan of the indies and you've watched Apollo Crews on the indie scene, you know he could do way better than this already. But he's just doing the traditional shit. And I think it's because he's still young. He's only 20 years of age. So I still say he has more time to evolve as time progresses. I just hope that does not happen to him. And Tyler Breeze deserves a lot more in wrestling right now. I think he deserves to be an NXT champion. Or if they bring a secondary belt, he should be the one to hold it first. And if he gets to the main roster, I think he should try out and beat John Cena for the United States title. Gives John Cena a new, fresh face, I believe. But we'll see what WWE does with Tyler Breeze and Apollo Crews. So, that match is a 7. Okay, so next match. The finals of the Dusty Rhodes Classic. Bowler, Joe versus Corbin and Rhino. This match, overall, is a 7.5. Because... To me, when you're doing storytelling matches, you cannot make it not make sense. But, this was a storytelling match. And because, it's because the first match was also part of the storytelling. Because Finn Balor injured his leg during that match. And I think that's what slowed down this match. But, honestly, if they're going to sell it, show that Finn Balor is a credible champion, they did a good job of it. But, the reason why I made it a 7.5, giving it that extra 1.5 point, is because they made Samoa Joe look like a total beast out there. Like, honestly, Joe was like the Hulk. He was, he was there, he was like King Kong, destroying everybody in Wake. Like, you knew he was going to win the match for Balor and him. Corbin looked pretty damn aggressive. I think he did good as an aggressive heel. Made him look more convincing. Rhino was just Rhino. Rhino looked pretty good too, but what really got me in that match, which made me the highlight of my night for that match, was when I never thought this would ever happen, where Samoa Joe would do the muscle buster on Rhino. I thought Rhino was just too big for Joe. But, no, Joe got him up on his shoulders, drove that son of a bitch to the mat. And it was beautiful. And then on top of that, you have Finn Balor doing his coup de grace, which I think tweaked his leg even more. So, overall, that match is a 7.5. Um, the next thing I should say is I love Cody Rhodes', Cody Rhodes speech for those guys, and they're all taking pictures waving the shaka, doing the wolf pack, or Balor Club thing they're doing, I don't know, or that Bullet Club, you know, too sweet kind of deal, but 
it was a, it was a really nice it was a really nice tribute to Dusty. All right, now finally the last match of the night, which is the Divas match. That was the main the first Divas main event of NXT, and that was Sasha Banks taking on Women's Champion Bailey. In which for the women's championship in a 30 minute Iron Man match, which was a classic. For one, this match proved that Bailey can go and she can be taken seriously as a wrestler. And Sasha Banks in this match, with this whole thing, shows that she has a nasty side. She has a fire burning within her that shows that she is probably one of the best divas out there and she'll do whatever it takes to be the champion to be the top and it was just a great example of that match especially when she slammed Bailey right into right into the freaking stage man I mean wow Bailey gets counted out I think it was kind of dirty how Sasha Banks won all her matches by dirty moves but I mean right there her falls but Sasha Banks put up a great, great show. I mean, she was a very vicious heel out there. And I see her being one of the top diva heels out there. But we got to see where her development goes in this diva's revolution. Like I said, though, in the past, this is only the genesis. It's only the beginning. You need a beginning storyline to get to point B to point C to point D. The best part's always going to be in the middle, where it be from point F to point P, or point R. Yeah, you see where I did it, huh? <laughs> I'm just saying, though. Your best part of the Divas Revolution hasn't even happened yet. It's only in the beginning. It's only like, we already went from A, we're going to B now. We're going to execute C soon. So, you, got, you just got to stay tuned. Right? I think the first good part will come around Wrestlemania time for the Divas Revolution. That's just my humble opinion. Um, but the fact that they're doing a classic matches with Banks and Bailey was it's just... I mean, I named that one Match of the Night and it was a 10. This one exceeded it. Even knowing Sasha was more dirty in this match and I kind of see her fall pinfalls as questionable. It, it still showed her as not really a lower class diva like how it's been on the Divas Revolution, but shows her as a strong, strong diva heel. And if I were Team Bad, I know Naomi's the leader, but I think Sasha Banks is what she is, says she is, and that's the boss. So I wouldn't underestimate her from that perspective. Alright, and then on um, Bailey, I mean, I underestimated her. I thought her gimmick just sucked to begin with because she's a hugger and she's that get happy go lucky girl. Which there's nothing wrong with that. I like those kind of girls. I love giving them hugs and, you know, just giving them a kisser here or there too. Why? Because they're always there to comfort you when they see you are hurting. That's the kind of good girl you should find. But Overall, Bailey proved to me she's a good wrestler. She should be where she is. She belongs there. And it was just... That match was so beautiful for a Divas main event. It really told me something. Divas not only can main event, but the damn Divas revolution has a lot of potential. And I think they can do something with it. So... And if everybody's going to ask me right now, really, are they really going to focus on that when they know the WWE title is the main title to worry about? I'm sure they will. It's just, you got to do it the right time, the right situation, the right scenario to do that. I mean, it's like Undertaker. Who is the right person for him to be? Obviously to everybody. No one should have beat The Undertaker. Not even Brock Lesnar. Honestly, I'm going to say this. If anybody should have beat Undertaker, I know a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, should have been CM Punk. That did not happen. 
we got Brock Lesnar. And I still say to this day, Brock Lesnar shouldn't have been the one. But, it, I guess it was the right time for Taker and it was the right time for Vince. So, I, I'm not going to argue with it anymore because it's just like, it's done, it's happened. And I believe um, Undertaker can, can do a recovery. But I don't think he's wrestled his last match yet. I still think he has lost. He has two more. So when I look at the Divas Revolution, never say never. Their main event could happen, and it could happen. I The only thing I don't see the Divas Revolution happening, having a main event, I think that's going to be far, far beyond in the future, and that would be WrestleMania. They won't have a main event at WrestleMania. WrestleMania is for the guys who are on the upper mid, the upper card, the main event card. And the Divas, they can be main events too, but I look at it as this way. It would be like WrestleMania 8, where the main event you had to see that night, which is going to be the closer of the show, which is the real main event, was Hogan and Justice. But everybody knew... Flair and Savage could be could do just as well. So, we have two main events. Though everybody does agree, main event should have been Hogan and Flair. But, they didn't happen. So. Do I see the Divas being a secondary main event, if you're asking me what I'm saying here? Fuck yes. Fuck yes. <laughs> um... Overall, this match is a 12, just because it exceeded the actual match. And the selling that Sasha did last night for Bailey made Bailey look even more stronger and more beast than what she already was. Sasha was a beast too, so I'm just going to say it's a 12 out of 10. It exceeded my scale. That's, that's pretty damn good. So NXT TakeOver, respect altogether. Just because they had an emotional ending to that show last night, I teared up. I cried. And really, I, I never cried for a Divas match. I probably cried for a Daniel Bryan match or a Stone Cold Steve Austin match or CM Punk's match with Jericho or even an Undertaker match. But for NXT and a Divas match... That made me that made me feel like a fan again. That made me feel inside to be a fan. And that was probably one of the greatest Divas matches I've ever seen since Trish and Lita. So altogether, I'm just gonna say Especially and it made me more emotional because the whole entire roster came out and congratulated both girls. Triple H and Stephanie gave them the the flowers and K Fabe also brought out Sarah Del Rey. I mean, Joe's in the background, he's all proud. I mean, the way they did that spot was beautiful, and it was really emotional, it was really heartwarming, and it's that beautiful, good moment. So, because of that, NXT TakeOver Respect gets a 10. I think NXT London's going to do better, but we'll see. Alright, so what's next to say? Um, I, well, actually, let's make this for the comic column, and that is James Storm signing... James Storm! Cowboy James Storm! Former World Heavyweight Champion James Storm! Yes, WWE has acknowledged James Storm's world title reign in TNA and saying that he's a heavyweight champion. So in my opinion, what is, I think it's great for the company for NXT to have James Storm. I've always thought he was going to be a talent in WWE. He's great. I think he'll be a great mid-card talent at most. But I think they're going to do him justice where TNA you know, messed up. But overall, I think James Storm going to WWE is really good. But I also want to hear your guys' comments, so what do you guys think about James Storm? And if you guys want to talk about your NXT TakeOver matches, do so. I want to see your guys' opinions, too. And then, what you guys thought about TNA Bound for Glory, that's another one. 
And the next sh next thing I should mention for a review will be the Hell in a Cell and possibly the Stone Cold Podcast. But up to then, I'll probably be working on other project videos, whether they be like cooking or we talk about politics or even South Park or even Pokemon or something like that. I'm still deciding on what the next video is going to be. I kind of do this off the top of my head, folks, so... If I do a Pokemon one, it's going to do the research. It's going to be South Park, it's going to be done the research. As you can tell, these wrestling ones, it's done with the research, but I also put my own opinion to it. Uh, if it's for cooking, I'm going to show you guys stuff that I know. And I'm going to probably learn some stuff to show to you guys as well. But that's in the future, so... We'll see what we got coming up. Coming in now, if you guys have any questions that you want me to answer, send them. That would be awesome. Because we're all open to our opinion. And, if, and I really, if you're going to act, and I'm going to say this right now just to clarify this before you do throw your questions or your opinions out there. If you're going to be an angry fan and be disrespectful to the podcast, the YouTube, and possibly to this entire show in any way, because I know some guys are, I'm just going to tell you what my mother told me, and I hope your mother told you, and that is, you have nothing nice to say, don't even, don't even waste your time, don't say it at all, alright, I mean, if you have nothing nice to say, and you're going to be a jackass, and not be respectful to other people's opinion, including the guys who will also comment down below, Along with my shit, I mean, really, be respectful. Don't be a jackass. If you are going to say something negative, go on your very merry way. The main reason why, it's because life's too short to ruin a home and to basically piss off people. So, you want to piss off a person, really? Go piss off a angry drunk. I'm pretty sure they would like to fight with you. But other than that, y'all have a good weekend. Have a good night. And God bless y'all. And if you don't believe in God, I still send, I send my love to y'all. Y'all take care. Love your families. Oh yeah. And at the end, I know this sounds cheesy, but tip your damn waitresses. I mean, fuck, they work hard enough to deal with you guys. On top of that, enjoy the food there while you're at it too. Peace.